In this video, I'm going to show you how I run my gas lines using black iron pipe. So I'm going to be going over everything from sealing the joints, my gas line plan, and how I pressure test my gas lines. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This is all about building your own house and a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. Disclaimer. Gas lines can be extremely dangerous if not installed properly, so always hire a professional if you do not know what you're doing. In my jurisdiction, I'm building in, I can do my own gas lines as long as they get thoroughly inspected and I apply for the proper permits, so be sure to check your local building codes when doing so. And this video is for entertainment purposes only. Let's get started. Some of the tools and supplies I'll be using are these pipe wrenches. I'm going to be using two of them to tighten up my fittings. These are what's called nipples. They're just short black iron pipes. Here's a half inch, here's a three quarter. And these are elbows that are going to be used to make 90 degree turns. These are couplings to join two pipes together. This is a reducing elbow and this is just a standard half inch elbow. We got a three quarter inch shutoff valve. We got caps and we got plugs. And I use the yellow tape because I'm going to be installing this for propane and or natural gas for that matter. And then I got this pipe dope that I'm going to be using as well. More on that in just a minute. Then I got my pressure testing set up here. And then I got some plastic strapping that I'm going to be using to hold the pipe. I use a wire brush in case there's a joint that has a little corrosion on it that I can just clean the threads quickly my impact driver to secure the pipe using the strapping. And here's just some random length pipes I'm going to be using. Here's that pipe dope up close. The actual name's pipe sealant, or some people call it joint compound. But if we take a look here, you can see it's yellow. Most of the yellow pipe dope or pipe sealant is meant for natural gas or propane. And if we take a look back here in the writing that's on the back of the label, it says right here that it is for natural gas and LP. It's hard to read it because it's so small, but that's what it says. So I always double check to make sure I get the right stuff. You, I do not want to use the white when I'm doing this because the white is only for water. So I just wanted to show you this up close. Here's an overview of my gas line plan. So this is just a quick outline of my house roughly that I'm building now. So right here's the fireplace, right here's the range, and right here's where my propane tank's gonna be sitting. So as you can see, I got a line going from the fireplace by the range and then out to the propane tanks. And what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna stub up through the floor using half inch pipe because I'm doing a trunk and branch run. So I got three quarter inch pipe, that's the dotted line. And then the circles is where the half inch pipe is going to stub up through the floor to pick up the fireplace and range. And then I'm going to exit the house with the three quarter inch pipe and there is where I'll be hooking to my propane tank. So it's a pretty simple idea. And pipe sizing in this case for me was fine with three quarter inch pipe. So pipe sizing is something that I had to research a little bit when I first learned how to run my gas lines. So that's just something to think about, but as you can see, pretty simple setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to running these pipes. I'm gonna first begin by getting my half inch pipe into this ventless fireplace. And in order to do so, I gotta come in through the side here, I already knocked the knockout out and I already drilled a hole down through the floor. And I made a slotted hole so I had a little bit of room to maneuver. So my first goal was to make an L-shaped pipe using the half inch black iron pipe. These are the two joints I gotta make to enter into the fireplace. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my yellow gas line tape and grab the pipe. Either pipe's fine to start out with. And since it threads this way, we wanna make sure we run our tape clockwise because in order for this to tighten, it tightens clockwise like so. So we want to run our tape the same way. If not, I'm going to have the tape come off as I thread on the fitting. So I'm just going to hold the end of it here and then just go around it about five times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then I'm going to break that off. Then always just give it a little twist. So that looks good. And now what I do, I'm gonna go ahead and take my pipe sealant and I already stirred this up well, so it's ready to go. And now I'm just gonna take it and go around that joint. And you don't need a ton of this stuff, just enough for to get it around the pipe without having a mess everywhere is my goal. So something like that. 
And um, a lot of people don't use the uh, tape and the dope at the same time, but I feel like it's a good practice just because it's going to help get double protection in my opinion. And now I'm just going to go ahead and start threading on my elbow. First, I'm going to go by hand. And then after I can't go by hand anymore, I'm just going to take my pipe wrench on one, one side here. And then I'm going to go on the fitting with the other. And I got to adjust my wrenches accordingly. Actually, looks like I need to go like that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this up. And I try not to tighten it super tight to where it's going to break the fitting. My goal when I do these is just make sure it's really snug. Because if you keep tightening, I may run the risk of breaking the pipe or the fitting. All right, that feels really good. And now that's my first joint I'm going to make. And now I just got to do the same with the other pipe. Again, I'm going to go ahead and go clockwise with my Teflon tape. Five rotations around. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of my sealant. Now I just got to thread it onto this. Again, always use my hand as far as I can go. And then, now since I got a nice handle here, I don't need a wrench on this side. I just need to grab the pipe like so. I'm just going to tighten my pipe to where it's snug and not so tight to where it breaks the fitting. As you can see, it doesn't take much of that sealant to give you an adequate amount. We got some left over down here. So that's all there is to uh, making a joint pretty simple. And now I just got to install this into the fireplace and go down the crawl space. All right, so as you can see, I got the pipe in and it's going right into the fireplace. So now on this side, I'm just going to install a plug here or a cap, I should say. So that way I can pressure test the system after it's done. So when it comes to this, I'm just going to use the tape because I got to remove this later to install the gas logs. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this around just a handful of times. Like I said, five is recommended for me. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here now. And the reason why I couldn't install this cap beforehand was because it wouldn't fit in through this hole if I did. So, that should be good. Now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this on by hand first and then just give it a couple turns here with my pipe wrench. And again, I'm not going to do this super tight, just enough to more or less say I did. Okay, that should be good. I'm down here in the crawl space. Here's that pipe that I stubbed down from the fireplace. And now what I'm going to do is use this reducing elbow and thread it onto the half inch and it's going to go to three quarter and I'm going to connect it the exact same way that I connected the fittings upstairs. All right, so I got it tightened all the way and I have it angled to where it's going to be going on a 90 degree away from the fireplace because I got to go down just like the plan showed and turn 90 again to go towards the range. The next piece that I got installed is this three quarter inch piece that was cut down to 58 inches. And just so you know, there's a service at Lowe's or Home Depot that they'll cut and thread your pipe for free. So I had to buy a five foot piece. So I had to pay for the whole five foot just to get the 58 inch piece. So just a couple inches knocked off of it. So just so you know, that's what I use instead of buying a threading machine because they're thousands of dollars and I don't run that much gas line to worry about it. But I'm going to go ahead and figure out about where it's going to be. So something like that. So what I need to do is go through with strapping 
and just put strapping to hold this piece temporarily until I get it secured to that elbow. So since I know that the strapping needs to be right in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my roll of strapping and then get a drywall screw and just stick it into place roughly for now. So about right in here. And then I'm just gonna roll the strapping down and get another drywall screw and just stick it here temporarily. And I'm not gonna cut the strapping yet until I have my pipe secured, just in case I gotta extend it. So something about like that looks about right. So again, I'm just sticking this here enough temporarily to hold my pipe. And then after I set my pipe, I'll go ahead and make sure it's finalized. So now I'm just gonna stick my pipe up into that strapping to hold it on the one side. I'm gonna come over here and just start the threading to hold it into place for now. I just do that to make sure everything's gonna work out okay. And that looks pretty good. So now that I know it'll work, I'm just gonna go ahead and make my connection. So now I'm over here at the other end, I'm gonna make sure the pipe looks nice and square and sitting at the right height where I want it. And it looks really good where it's at. So now I'm just gonna cut the remainder of my strapping off here and I'll use that for the next run. So I literally am just gonna rinse and repeat that whole process to, until I exit the house. This pipe had a little debris on the end. That's why I used that wire brush to clean the end. I don't have to do that on every pipe, but some I do. When I install a 90 degree elbow, I turn it until it becomes pretty tight and then I give it a final turn pointing towards the direction it needs to be going. Oftentimes I like to dry fit my pipes together first to make sure everything lines up properly and it's gonna hit the targets I'm trying to hit, such as the gas range, and then I'll go ahead and make my final connections. This is a reducing T. I'm gonna be stubbing up to the gas range right here. So what I'm gonna do is turn this thing until it's tight and again, make the final twist and angle it right up to where it's gonna be for the range. I'm here at the end of the run before it exits the house. So what I did is I took a six inch nipple and just dry fit these elbows on it. So what I'm gonna do is just hold that up into place and see where it puts me because I gotta end up taking this 12 inch piece out the house. So that way it's gonna give me a place to hook onto my propane tanks outside. So right now, I'm just gonna set this up here, get some measurements and then drill out the band board. Now I'm gonna take this inch and a quarter drill bit and drill out through the house. It should be plenty big enough to get that pipe through. I have had to drill through block before, and in that case, I would have used a rotary hammer drill to get through. This elbow was easy to install. All I had to do is install the nipple onto the elbow and then just use the nipple to turn and tighten up the elbow. It was a little bit of a challenge to tighten up this elbow inside the joist space. I just had to go little quarter turns at a time. All right, as you can see, that gives me a nice run to the outside. Nothing wrong with that. Now I just hand tightened that because I couldn't get my wrench up in there very well. So I'm gonna go outside and finish the final outside before I pressure test it. I apologize if you hear some wind, it's pretty breezy out here right now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and finish tightening this up with my pipe wrench. I'm gonna be careful not to damage the siding because I am a little snug here. And then my final out here, 
for now is just going to be this shuttle valve. I'd like to point out I put a plug here at the end of this because it's going to be outside for a while before I put anything on it. So that way it'll keep moisture out. And I could have probably pressure tested it with this shutoff valve, but I figured I'd go ahead and just not put all that pressure on it because I'm going to put 100 PSI in it. I'm going to put quad caulk around this hole after I get the pressure testing done and make sure everything holds. I don't want to do it now because in case God tighten it, it's going to be a problem. So I'm going to put duct seal in back where the wood is and then quad caulk around there. So I rigged up this setup just to pressure test gas lines. And what it is, it's a one inch head that has a place to put your valve stem and then it has a pressure gauge right here. And then I have this reducer on the bottom. It's a bushing that reduces that one inch down to a half inch. And here is the half inch pipe that we stubbed up below. All right, so I'm gonna pull this plastic off the pipe and I've kept that on there so wood chips didn't go down into the pipe when I was pushing up through. On this connection, I'm just gonna use tape. I'm not gonna use the pipe dope just because, like I said before, this is just temporary. So I just need it for the pressure test and I'm gonna be removing it. So we just wanna wrap it around there a few times. Now I'm just gonna install this pressure gauge on here. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put pressure in it. I got my air compressor filled up with 100 PSI. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fill this baby up with pressure. As you can see, we got our pressure starting to climb now. And I'm gonna put 100 pounds in this, but these gas lines will probably never see more than 15 pounds when it's actively being used. But I figured if it holds 100 pounds of PSI, I should be good to go. All right, there's 100 pounds. We'll let it set overnight. It was about 4 p.m. yesterday afternoon when we put air in those lines, and right now it's about 8 a.m. in the morning. So there's been pressure sitting in those lines for roughly 16 hours, so that is adequate amount of time to see if we have a pressure drop and see if we have a leak. So what I brought with me is a little bit of water and dish liquid mix, because if we do have a pressure drop when we check that manometer, we're gonna go through and spray soapy water on each one of those joints so we can narrow down where we have a leak. So let's go ahead and check the pressure gauge and see if we had a pressure drop overnight. And the verdict is we did not have a pressure drop overnight. That is awesome. So if we did have a pressure drop, the first place I would have checked is the joint right here because we did not use pipe dope for this temporary fitting. And also at the fireplace where we put that temporary plug on, we didn't use pipe dope there either. So that would be the first place I'd spray and check. Now that I know I don't have to tighten up the pipes anymore in the crawl space, I gotta bond the gas lines. And what I'm gonna be using is this clamp and I'm gonna go under there and show you what I'm gonna do. I'm here at the location where the black iron pipe exited the house and I ran this number six bare copper wire to the panel box and it's bonded inside the panel box. So now what I gotta do is take that clamp and hook it to my black iron pipe. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. First thing I'm gonna do is just take this sandpaper and get the pipe down to more of a metal and get the black coating off here. All right, that looks good enough for me. So this clamp opens up like this and we'll go around the pipe. So it's gonna be something like this. So now I'm gonna place it up where I took the black pipe down to metal. And I'm just gonna tighten it up right there. And this clamp requires a straight screwdriver. Now what I'm gonna do is take my copper wire and place it inside of that terminal on the clamp. I'm just gonna fish it through a few inches there. Then I'm just gonna kinda of bend it up out of the way, something like so. And now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down. And now I'm just gonna bend this copper wire back. Something like so. And now I can say that I am bonded and the gas lines will be protected from any electrical charge that might hit this lightning or whatnot. It's recommended that this copper wire be no longer than 75 foot. 
If it wasn't raining outside right now, I'd show you how I'd seal around that black iron pipe using this quad caulk where it went through the siding. This is for windows, doors, and siding. It's really good stuff. I highly recommend it. Also, I could have used CSST or soft copper for this installation for the gas lines, but I really like the black iron pipe because I feel like it's a solid product and it's going to be there for a lifetime, so I wanted something good. Also, if you want to see how I installed PEX pipe, check out this video. It'll help you out.